Now, in 2014, mm -hmm. you actually won the Academy Award for Best Documentary mm -hmm. of a film called 20 Feet from Stardom, uh, about extremely talented uh, singers um, that were like Judith Hill, Claudia Lamar. Um, Lanier, yeah. Lanier, I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, uh, Tate Vega, of course, uh, Mary Clayton, uh, and uh, Darlene Love. Uh, sure. Let's watch a clip. Sure. Singing background remains a... I suppose a somewhat unheralded position, you know. There's a power to these women that stand on stage with these guys. It's a bit of a walk. That walk to the front is, is as complicated. Can you turn off the radio? How could you logically not have a diva have her music on? I, I don't get that. The rock and roll people like Bruce and Elton John and, and Stevie wanted to know who that girl singer was. My life has been all about trying to make a success of the gift that I had. She was like the really hot one of the I gets. She was very hot, beautiful girl. I don't set out to be the sex symbol. But you post in Playboy. My greatest pleasure is to stand back and let them do what they can do. When you're back on singing, it is a springboard, but it can easily become quicksand if that's not what you want to do. There's no guarantees in entertainment. I've got dreams. Dream. I felt like if I just gave my heart Remember. to what I was doing, I would automatically be a star. It got so bad, I started cleaning houses. And I just looked up and said, OK, you're supposed to be singing. There's a whole world out there who wants to hear you sing. They're in the game, and they stayed in the game, and they're legends. It is my honor to induct into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and about time to Miss Darlene Love. Wow. What what was the real story behind what inspired the creation of that movie? Can you tell us? Sure, the real <laughs> the real story. Um, the idea belonged to Gil Friesen. The producer. The producer. Uh, and Gil had been the president of A&M Records for a number of years. And the story he told me the day I met him uh, was that he had recently gone to a Leonard Cohen concert and had smoked a joint and had spent the entire concert fixated on the three amazing backup singers. Yeah. And if you've ever seen Leonard Cohen, you know he has amazing backup singers and he features them in incredible ways and just uses them. Um, and Gil said he spent the whole concert thinking, what's their story? And he said when he woke up the next day, the thought was still in his head. You know, what, what are their lives like? And he said, so th this is my idea. Let's make a documentary about backup singers. And I said, that's really interesting because as much music as I know and as many music documentaries as I'm, I'd made, I didn't really know much about backup singers. And I said, well, what, what do you think the film is? And he said, well, that's your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just kind of jumping off the cliff and hoping that we found something. And there were no books to read. There was no way to research it other than to just talk to backup singers.